happens. So there's the world headquarters. We've got a handful of clients. I've been making the calls for a year and a half now, but now the challenge is, Josh, you sound great on the phone, but can you get other people to do this? And so I'm having to start hiring some employees. And so I know I have paying customers that have a problem. They have a problem, and I'm here to solve it. Right? That's, that's the simple formula from, that most entrepreneurs follow. You have a problem, I'm going to solve it. That's about as deep as it goes. So I'm like, okay, well, people have a problem. We need to solve this. We need to hire some people. So I put out a job ad on Texas A&M's career website, and it's something probably pretty ambiguous, like part-time real estate assistant or something that doesn't really sound like you're going to get beat up on the phone all day long. <laughs> right? So we lure in these candidates, and we do the interview. We dist profile them. We phone interviewed them. We in-person interviewed them. And we said, you're going to be great at this. Day one starts tomorrow. So I remember one, one uh, young gentleman came in for his first training day, and McKinley was his trainer. So he shows up on the first day of training. like He had no idea what it was that we actually did or what problem we solved or what his actual job was going to look like. So he shows up, and McKinley jumps in. Okay, this is what we do, and these are the calls that we make. And this is a dialer. It calls three people at the same time. And this is the CRM, and you have to have both windows open at the same time. All this stuff is going on. Oh, and this guy just told me to screw off, and this guy told me no. But that's great. It's part of the job. We just, we just move forward, you know. And I'm sure this guy's probably thinking, what in the heck did I get myself into? So about 45 minutes in the shift, he's like, uh, where, where's the restroom at? Can I go to the restroom? So he heads down the hall, heads to go take a quick restroom break. McKinley sits there patiently. Five minutes go by. <laughs> Ten minutes go by. Fifteen minutes go by. She finally has to go find another male employee and say, hey, the guy I was training said he went to the bathroom, but that was like 15, 20 minutes ago. Can you go to the bathroom and see if he's still there, I guess? And sure enough, her suspicions were confirmed. The, the guy went to the bathroom. He was gone. Clocked in, never clocked out. <laughs> 45 minutes of labor I owe somebody on planet Earth for, for coming and be, training with us for 45 minutes. So the problem was we were hiring the wrong people, right? We brought in people. We were sort of tricking them into doing this work that nobody else wants to do. That's how the company started. I figured, shoot, why not just keep it moving, you know? I got tricked into doing this work. I'll just trick some other people into doing the work as well. <laughs> <laughs> what was our real challenges, though? is our candidates did not have clear expectations for what was actually going to be required of them to do this work. And so we thought, well, this is a giant disaster. What can we do to improve this? So here is your culture tool. What we did, and again, Wise Hire did a great job of explaining all the steps of hiring, bringing in the right candidates, getting the right person for the right role. But what we did that was very important was we invited them to an observation. And so at the end of the interview where we thought a candidate might be a great fit, we would basically say to them, Hey, you know, uh, we feel like based upon your, uh, you know, phone interview and your interview today, we feel like you'd be a great candidate for what it is that we do here. However, the next step in our interview process is to invite you back for an observation. And what we're going to do is we're going to pair you up with one of our most senior reps on the floor, and you're going to be with them for an entire hour while they're working. You're going to be paired up with them, and I want you to ask them every single question that you can think of. This is your interview of us. Okay? We know you would be good at the work, but now we need to figure out whether or not you want to do it, whether you're going to be challenged by it. And so this is actually a Facebook live stream of a walkthrough in our office. This is kind of simulate what, what, a, what, a, uh, what an observation would be like. And by the way, if you guys don't already like us on Rockerbox, I'm going to beg you to right now. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Rockerbox. Every single month, we do a live stream in our office, and we show you a different component of our business. So be sure to like us on Facebook, and you'll see that stuff come up in your newsfeed. But this is essentially a walkthrough of our office. We would pair that candidate up with one of the senior reps. We would say, this is the problem that we solve. This is how we solve it. This is the technology we use. This is a dialer. This is Mojo. These are our scripts. These are our dialogues. These are our objection handlers. This is this person and this role of the company. This is what we do over here. This is what we do over there. And it was a very, very, very clear explanation of exactly what's going to be expected of this candidate. And so I encourage each and every one of you to implement an observation in your hiring process. Right? Why, basically, the, the, the tragedy and the heartache that I put McKinley through it was not her fault. It was our fault as an organization because we were not making it clear what the expectations were. So if you guys want to run highly productive organizations and you're going to require a lot of productivity from your individuals, bring them in. Don't, don't lure them in and trick them into doing the work. Bring them in and show them exactly what it is that you do. And then what we ask them to do at the end of the observation is to write us an email and say, write us an email and let us know how well you would be a culture fit within our organization. And at that point, we basically get these persuasive essays from these candidates saying, oh my gosh, I noticed this, I'm attracted to this, I'm challenged by that, this is going to help me do this, I'm going to help the company do that. It's basically them selling us now on why we're the right organizational fit for them. And the benefit is we also have a lot of people that come through observations and we never hear of them ever again. 
which is great because now we don't have to waste any time into the training. We don't have to waste the heartache that McKinley had by having the guy disappear on her in the bathroom, right? And we also don't have to worry about someone just kind of going through the motions for the first 30 days before they finally find a reason to, to quit. Like, you want to challenge them on day one. This is exactly what the work looks like. Are you capable of doing this? Are you excited about doing this? Do you feel challenged in this role? And so that's kind of an observation of what it would look like. Of course, it would be a full hour that we would have with that candidate. So observation, write it down, make sure you're adding that to your hiring process. 